Well, hello again. And first I want to thank you for all the encouraging words many of you have sent regarding the message that I shared with you on Sunday's video service. On this day, however, when the sun has been shining so bright that I felt the need for sunglasses for the first time this year, I thought I'd just share a few more thoughts on darkness and perhaps what it might have in common with light. On Sunday, I shared how some parents are cautious about exposing their children to darkness as they try to protect them from harm and the fear of harm. And I shared some thoughts about what this teaches children and therefore all of us as we grow up about darkness. But it's not just parents that teach about darkness. The church and the Bible teach us about it too. My memory of being taught about darkness by a church comes from when I was a teenager and I was going to a church on Sunday evenings that majored on spiritual darkness. For them, darkness was a metaphor of evil. They used to refer to clubs and pubs as places of darkness and they urged us to stay away from anything that could be cloaked in spiritual darkness like secular music. To some of you that will sound ridiculous, but for others I suspect you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. For this church it wasn't only the external darkness that had power, as if spirits were lurking in every shadow waiting to get me. Inner darkness was inescapable too, unless I continually fought to keep the light of Christ shining in me by singing worship songs and reading my Bible. And they had all the Bible verses to back up this theology too. After all, the vast majority of verses in the Bible that make mention of darkness understand it to be bad news. In the Old Testament, light tends to stand for life and darkness for death. In the New Testament, light often stands for knowledge and darkness, ignorance. However, you may be surprised to know that there are only about a hundred references to darkness in the Bible, but these individual verses are not the whole story of darkness in Scripture. Think of Abraham, for instance, who when despairing at his lack of children was told by God to go out into the night and count the stars in the sky. That's how many descendants you will have, God said. It was not something that could have happened in the middle of the day. The darkness was a key tool used by God in helping Abraham come to trust him. Think of Jacob, perhaps, Abraham's grandson, who in the night had a dream where God said to him, I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go and I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. This wasn't something God chose to say in the cold light of day. It was in the darkness of night that God met Jacob. The night vision was a key player in Jacob believing in God. A lot of important things happened in darkness in the Bible, many of them linked to the story of the Exodus. The escape from Egypt itself happened at night. God parted the Red Sea at night. Manna fell from the sky in the wilderness at night in preparation for its gathering in the morning. But one of my favourite stories of God moving in darkness is when God spoke to the Israelites at Mount Sinai. In Exodus 19 we read that the Lord said to Moses, I am going to come to you in a dense cloud so that the people will hear me speaking with you and will always put their trust in you. The people won't be able to see God, but they will be able to hear him talking to Moses. Then God sets a date three days later when he's going to reveal himself to the people. But when that day comes, the weather doesn't appear to be conducive to people hearing or seeing God. The mountain is covered by a dark cloud and is trembling violently. A mysterious noise like a trumpet was blasting out and getting louder and thunder and lightning erupted all around. God warns the people through Moses not to try to enter the dark cloud. Then God speaks, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. The Israelites then hear the Ten Commandments, directly from the voice of God, emanating from the darkness. And when it's all over, they've had enough. They're full of fear of the Lord. 
and more than happy to go back to Moses being the intermediary of God's revelation. Verse 21 then says, The people remained at a distance when Moses approached the thick darkness where God was. This darkness, of course, did not occur because the sun was going down. It was a darkness that was entirely unnatural and sourced by God's presence. It was a darkness that is both deeply uncomfortable, but also profoundly divine. The Hebrew word for this darkness is different to most occurrences of, of the word darkness in the Bible. It has its own word, arafel a word for darkness that is exclusively used when referring to God's presence in darkness. It's a strange oxymoron, a darkness that both conceals and reveals God's presence, much like the brightness of God's glory does. I wonder what those who had taught me as a teenager that darkness is always bad would make of that. For them, the thought that God might reveal himself in darkness was laughable. Light equaled God and goodness, dark equaled sin and evil. Therefore, stay away from darkness at all costs. It wasn't until I was about 21 that I started to question this teaching. I was a youth worker in Birmingham and led a group of about 25 young people and young adults. And at the time, my training in youth work had taught me that good youth work was always done in the context of positive relationships. So I went out of my way to connect with the young people in ways that affirmed those things we had in common. Music was one of those things. I'd been going to gigs for a few years and I had enjoyed the Birmingham music scene. But as far as the young people were concerned, I still had a fairly sheltered experience of quality music. Perhaps this was a hangover from the days that I'd been taught secular music was dark and therefore bad. So a group of them took it upon themselves to educate me. And so began a year of going to numerous gigs, most of which were quite eye-opening. I don't have time to go into the details of some of the things that I'd seen or heard. In any case, much of it I suspect has been scoured from my memory. But what I can remember is that some of those evenings were amongst the most profound experiences of Christian youth work I've ever had. Following the gigs, we'd catch buses or taxis home and talk about the music, the empathy that they had with it, and they'd reflect on the stories of their lives. In the lateness of the hour, people would open up about all sorts of things, the good, the bad, and the ugly, stories of joy, stories of sorrow, stories of regret. And in those gigs and buses and taxis, however uncomfortable they were, I really sensed God's meaningful presence. I remember thinking how I would have missed out on this encounter with God had I heeded the warnings of the well-meaning church from my teenage years. They would only want me to walk through doors that led to light. And that would be completely understandable. Some of the doors to darkness conceal some pretty scary things. But there are also some stunning things. The truth is, all these doors open to the same room where God can be found. He created darkness and light. And as the psalmist wrote, night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. Darkness can be unnerving because not being able to see in front of you can be disorienting and can be confusing. That's not a place most of us would voluntarily put ourselves. But as the 4th century monk Gregory of Nyssa taught, if we decide to venture beyond the safety of our knowledge and sight, if we have the courage to embrace the confusing and the unknown, we might just meet God, not in the brightness of day, but in dazzling darkness. Let's pray. Lord God, it feels for many of us as though darkness is all around. It can be quite overwhelming extremely confusing, deeply uncomfortable. I pray today that despite all of that, we would not be deceived into thinking you are not present in the darkness of this time. Lord, would you give us courage to encounter you today? Would the trepidation we have in finding you in this difficult place be a healthier fear and not a crippling one? May we approach you with awe and wonder, embracing the mystery of our God who reveals himself in the brightness of day and the dazzling darkness of night. 
And as we pray every day, would you bring comfort to those who are grieving, protection to those on the front line of this battle, wisdom to our leaders and patience to us all. Help us be mindful of all our neighbours in need at this time. Bring a swift end to this crisis, we pray, and help us as we rebuild for tomorrow. Amen.